So a big thing about AP is making sure that you can do mass percents and different things and so forth. So we have to figure out mass percent first. Mass percent. Right? Does anybody know what mass percent is? Rams of something. Mass of solute over oh, solution. Mass of solution. Right? And guess what we're going to do with that after we do that? Times it by 100. Okay. So sometimes you may have to pull it out from a percent. Sometimes it may give you 1% that says 87.5% and the other part. How much is the other part going to be? One's 87.5, You may just be expected to take 100% minus whatever else and figure out what the percent is, right? The next part of this is mass fraction of a component. All right, so these terms are long, yet they're not that complicated of a thing if you've seen it. So let's say we have this. So we have the total amount of A is going to equal, all right, let's see if we can do this. All right, let's just say we have uh, X of A is going to equal the moles of A over the moles of B plus the of A. So the mass fraction. What's the total uh, amounts on the bottom and whichever one you're looking for? It's not much different than something else. It's not much different than mass percent, except you're going to get a decimal point. You're not multiplying by 100. You're getting a decimal point. Very simple. So if something, a solution, uh, if a component of a solution was 62.4, uh, and the total was 148, you can figure out one of the three variables that's listed up here. This would be the total, this would be the component you're looking for. Right? And then molality. Right? These will make sense once we do a little problem about it. Molality. What does that equal? Moles. Moles of solute over. No. Kilograms of uh, not of solutions, solvents. All right, there's a difference of kilograms of solution versus kilograms of solvent. All right. Uh, no, not times of hundred. Right. Real quick, let's go over a couple examples that I have listed for you, All right? So some various types of solutions. All right, so let's, let's see if we can figure out what these are. Let's say I have air and natural gas. Let's say I turn on this right here. Air and natural gas. You know what? Can you smell anything yet? What is it doing right now? What is it doing? What's the term, chemical term for spreading across the room? <laughs> Why are you nervous? Why? It's natural gas. Yeah, but I feel like I should have a lighter. Are you going to All right, so what was the state of the solution? I just mixed natural air and gas. The state of it was gas. State of solution. I'm going to make this. Was gas. Okay, state of the solution, air and natural gas was gas. What is the state of the solute? Tough one. 
was the state of the solvent. Yes. Okay, so I just want to make sure you know that you can have gas. Now, what is the process of particles moving from a high concentration to a low concentration? Well, particles moving from a high concentration to a low concentration. I heard it. Diffusion. What did I just do? Particles of high concentration right through here. It was diffusing out through the room. It's the same premise as the part. Oh, see? Oh, yeah. Now we can get it. If you're sitting next to somebody that farted, who's going to smell it first? Because, okay, you would have the high concentration of fart particles near your butt. It would diffuse out. Maybe Mindy would smell it last because she's farthest away from you. Okay? That's the biggest deal. It, it, diffusion is the chemical process of the fart. Now, every time I go home, I see my cousin Greg. It's like he's been storing up. Because remember, <laughs> gas fills the container. As soon as I get in the car, without further ado, Christmas every year, it's just fart city, baby. And I'm like, are you serious? And it's in Buffalo, so it's like minus 400 and snowing. And I have to sit in the car with my cousin Schmeg, who smells like an egg. It's terrible. But anyways, yes, uh, just on the side here. That, that just made me think of, oh, what's that? in water uh, and I'm going to mix that with antifreeze. Why not? Alright, what's the state of the solution? Liquid. Alright, liquid. What's the state of the solvent? Solute, solvent. What's the state of this? All right, liquid and liquid. So I want to make sure that you know it doesn't matter which one I'm dissolving in. It can still be liquid. You don't have to dissolve a solid. I'm trying to get you past the point where it has to be a solid and a, and a liquid. That's what I'm trying to get you past the point. A couple other ones that have carbonated water. Um, what would that be? Carbonated water. Oh, by the way, what here is a solvent? this one. Yeah. Which is a solvent? No. This is one of them. And this is the other one. Which one's a solvent? Which one is a solute? Vodka is a solute. Antifreeze is a solvent. What here is a solute and solvent? Air, air is a solvent. Solute. Right? Carbonated water. Right? The state of the Solution is going to be liquid. Okay, what about the state of the solute? Think about, think about a Coca Cola. You open it up, what comes out? Carbon does not come out. I don't want to drink any carbon. I'm just going to put it out there. That's like me, uh, you know, you drink carbon when you overdose on drugs. That's called charcoal. And charcoal is made into a tar and they coat your stomach with it. I'm not drinking that. Okay? Uh, what is it? What's coming out of it? Carbon. Carbon monoxide is not coming out of it. Are you suffocating and dying? No. Carbon monoxide will asphyxiate you. It is not carbon monoxide. What is it? All right. So the state of the solute is going to be a gas. What about the state of the solvent? Liquid. All right, I think I've, I think I've covered enough of those. What about this? What about seawater and sugar solution? What's the solution? Liquid. What about the seawater or the sugar solution? What's the solute gonna be? All right. Okay. Very good. And then the last one that I have is hydrogen in platinum. All right, hydrogen in platinum. That's obviously going to be solid. What about the solute? Hydrogen, gas, and platinum is solid. Okay, so there's a couple more that I want.
on the add on there. All right, so without further ado, let's get into this. Uh, real quick, we already did molarity, so we're going to do mass. today. So there's 8 million different calculations you can do with a solution. And mass weight percent is 1. This equals the mass of the solute. It's going to be tough. What do you think? Mass, no. Mass of solution. And we're going to multiply that by 100. Okay? So you may have to do the mass weight percent. You have to pull it out. Not too hard. The other one is a mole fraction. What, mole fraction? No. Same as what? Uh, which one? Uh, it's pretty much the same. But this, this mass percent is of anything, solid, liquid, gas, is just of a solution. Well, it could be. Mole fraction. Right? Again. Uh, so let's just say I didn't have this guy. So it's going to look a lot like the other stuff that I did already. Moles of A is clarifying what I said earlier. Divided by total moles in solution. This is when I was like, oh, well, it's easy to find that little bit more. And molality we already did. Right? So that is the same. Okay. So that brings us up to... The first question on your packet is a solution is prepared by mixing one gram of ethanol C2H5OH. All right, can anybody tell me what meth, uh, what the abbreviation for meth is? You have uh, eth, meth, probut, et, oh. What's that? H4. Ethanol. 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 Oh. All right. So if I just had, I just, want, I just want to say this right now. We're going to get into it later in here. Ethane has how many carbons? Two. Two. So if I filled up all, saturated all my carbons, this would be ethane. To make it ethanol. I remove a hydrogen, add OH, C2H5OH. Anytime you do it all, ethanol, propanol, butanol, pentanol, you remove a hydrogen, add an OH. So it's just saying I'm linking off one, I'm adding a hydroxyl. Hydroxyl group. Okay, so anytime you make something in alcohol, just rip off one of the hydrogens, make it an OH. Yes. Yeah, it's not correct. It does not indicate that it is an alcohol. All right. All right, so let's do it. The molarity, uh, what are we trying to figure out? Molarity, um, how many people had trouble with this problem? Okay, you got it? All right, let's do mass percent then. Because you may have, may have had trouble with the mass percent part. All right, mass percent is part of the problem. The molarity was what? 0 0.215? 0 0.215 molar for the first part. Okay. Mass percent. So we need to take the mass of ethanol divided by the mass of the solution. Okay, and we're going to multiply that by 100. Okay, so what was my mass of the ethanol from the problem? 1.00 gram. So if you had something different, please write down how I solved it so you can get the 
the same amount of credit on the AP exam. And what was the mass of the water? Right, the water was 100 grams water plus one gram of ethanol, methanol, ethanol. I'm on methanol today, man. Right? So you need to make sure you indicate on your denominator. You cannot just put one on one solution. You cannot do that. Right? Because it's not showing what you need to show. I'm going to multiply that by 100. And I get a whopping zero point one five. Okay? Mass percent. It's very simple. You look at the numbers in your problem, add them up, and you're good to go. Any question on mass percent? Caleb's looking at it kind of cross. We have to also do the mole fraction, right? Mole fraction. I like to go over things you may have not done in your other classes. You have done molarity. You just crushed a molarity quiz, right? Mole fraction. All right, mole fraction. Uh, God bless you, All right? That is going to equal the moles of C2H5OH divided by the moles of, this is an N, C2H5OH plus N of H2O, moles of H2O. All right, so the first thing we need to do is obviously find N of H2O, okay? So you cannot simply say you know what the moles are, even though it may be obvious. The N of the H2O is always on my scoring key for AP exam. How do I find that? What do I do? All right, 100 divided by 18. I think it's 18.01. All right, so we get that number to be, what did you get? No, I did not get that. I got 5.56. All right, so I have that, 5.56. All right, next, um, I need to figure out, okay, How do I figure out the moles of C2 H5? OH. What do I do for that? Alright, so what do I do? What's, what's the number? Small point out. So you're all feeling good because you got these right. C2 H5, what do I put on the bottom? What do I divide by? All right, and what'd you get for that? 0 0.0217. That's what I got. About that. All right, so now we do the mole fraction, which is pretty easy. We're going to do X of C2H5OH. I'm not writing it this way because I need to write it this way. I'm writing it this way so I can get full credit on my exam for Mr. Hayes or the AP exam. All right, so I'm going to take my moles of that, 2.17 times 7 negative second mole. All right, I'm going to divide that. I don't care if you tell me what type of mole it is at that point. 2.17 times 7 negative second mole plus 5.56 moles. Get my mole fraction to be or 
not to be what? Which was given to you, um, which people have asked, and there's no unit on that. People have asked, I give you the answers. I, I can definitely give you the answers to any of the homework that you do um, so you can make sure you get the right answer. Okay? All right. So let's do the next step. So we're going to be calculating various methods of solution composition from molarity. The electrolyte in an automobile lead storage batteries is 3.75 molar. Molar, sulfuric acid solution, that is a density of 1.2 times 1.230 grams per mole. Calculate the mass percent, molality, and normality of the solution. Now I knew when Joe saw me the day after it was assigned and he had issues that some of you else may have issues. So I said, I will go over these, get you through these notes, and then we'll get rolling. So I wanted to go over these. I definitely want to go over these because these are normal AP type props. All right? So you'll never not see them again. You'll see them forever in your life. So the first thing we need to do is calculate the mass percent. All right? Well, we also have an issue with our, with this. What's the issue with that? Okay, you're going to have to get into liters. All right, so if I do that, what do I get? I always like to list like that for me just because I know someday I might use it instead of looking at a gram slash liter. I know that I'm going to have to may have to rid of that said unit. So the first thing I need to do is figure out what I have, how many grams of so I have 3.75 mole, um, and how many grams of sulfuric acid do I have? So how do I have to do? Oh, what did you do? Multiply by what? All right, 98.06 grams, H2SO4, one mole. So I can figure out how many grams that I'm working with. How many grams am I working with here? So I have to do mass percent. I gotta know how many grams I have. All right, I, I rounded maybe a little bit, 368 grams. Okay, I might have rounded a little bit. That could be me, so bear with me. Now, how many grams of solution do I have? I have 1,230. Yes, do you see that? So I'm gonna take my 1,230 and subtract my 368 going to get 862 grams of water. Well, that is a help for me to be able to solve my problems now. If you didn't do the background, there's no way you could have solved these problems correctly. All right? No way. Okay. Now, uh, Grammy, uh, what am I going to have to do here? I'm finding the mass percent of the sulfuric acid solution. The mass percent, I'll help you out here, H2SO4. All right, so what do I put on top of my fraction? You got it, 368 grams H2SO4. What do I put on the bottom? There you go, 1,230 grams. 
And I'm going to multiply that by 100, and I get what? What you should have got. 29.9%. Anytime you have a percentage, take it to the tenth place. That is a rule. Percent, percentages to the tenth. Molality. All right, molality. Anybody need any more time on that? Molality. Molality. Okay. Molality. Uh, so we're going to take the moles over kilograms. SO4. Oh, H2O, excuse me. Sorry. The wheel making a noise. There you go. Good job. Okay. So, molality. What are the moles? What moles do we have? Did we already solve for moles somewhere? Yes. Did we? No. I don't know. You tell me. In the problem. We already found out that there's 862 grams of water. We need to make that into kilograms. We should be able to do that quickly. And what do we get? 0 0.8. That was, it's easier than you look. You're like, what the hell was molality last night? Well, you did have it shown to you what it was in the problem, but that's really not that bad. The biggest difference in these problems is identifying what? Absolutely. I'm going to put this really big. Not solution mass. Not solution. Identifying the solvent, not the solution. All right. No malady. All right. Pretty easy. Let me get rid of this. All right. Are we good with that? What does it ask you? Normality. Calculate normality? Yeah. Oh, normality. Sorry. Sorry. You just says calculate it? Okay. Okay, calculate normality. All you have to do is times three. And so three. Three. If it's phosphoric acid, you multiply by three. That doesn't exist, but <laughs> times two. All right. It, it, all it is saying is this. When I do this, all right, so this is what happens. H2SO4. All right, let's say I dissociate it. I'm going to get H. SO4 minus plus H, and I'm going to do it again to get SO4 2 minus HSO4 
minus is going to dissociate again to H plus and SO4 two minus. So if it dissociates twice, two times, your normality has to be times two. It only does it once, it's exactly the same as whatever you would calculate for mole.